So a lot of people out there seem to think that all metalcore sounds like this. Or like this. But imagine people thinking that all death metal sounds like this. Pick up the pieces of my destruction. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? So I'm here to walk you naysayers through the genre to prove that just like in black and death metal, there's a lot of different potential sounds to enjoy here. Good luck. First up, we've got a full subgenre of bands inspired by melodic death metal, especially At The Gate's seminal album Slaughter of the Soul. This includes bands like Kill Switch and Gage, As I Lay Dying, All That Remains, and basically America's answer to Gothenburg, Darkest Hour. This last one in particular really gets wild with the shredding and keeps the clean vocals to a minimum, but really, if you're listening to stuff like Dark Tranquility or Opeth already, I don't see why they should be a problem regardless. My personal favorites from them include Undoing Ruin, Deliver Us, and the Kurt Ballou produced Godless Prophets and the Migrant Flora. And speaking of Kurt Ballou, next up we have our more noisy, chaotic bands born straight out of the 90s hardcore scene, and perhaps waving the largest flag for this sound to this day are the Legendary Converge. This is about as far removed from the gent sound that would develop over a decade later that you can get. Jacob Bannon's dying bird screams, Kurt's bulldozing riffs, and Ben Kohler's mind-bending work on the kit make for a truly punishing experience, channeling plenty of that entombed HM2 distortion and even moments that border on black metal in their rawness. And now with their latest union with Chelsea Wolfe and Caven's Stephen Brodsky, they have only further transcended the genre into the realms of doom, rock, and beyond. Staying in a somewhat adjacent realm, you've also got your full-on mathcore bands, largely once more born out of the hardcore scene, but taking their musicianship to an entirely different level with jazz and other influences that should still blow the top off of the technical death metal fans out there. Here you can find the likes of Botch, Norma Jean, The Number 12 Looks Like You, and of course the uncontested kings of the genre, The Dillinger Escape Plan. This is one of those bands that are so good that rather than fans accepting their roots, they prefer to engage in all sorts of mental gymnastics to explain why they just aren't metalcore. See, you ain't cope, in, cope, you're at the bottom of this guy leaderboard, you little coping. In any case, as far as albums go, just pick one. If you want something just pure and raw, go with Calculating Infinity, but if you also want a little bit more modern production and experimentation, go with Miss Machine or One of Us is the Killer. Even if you don't like it, I feel like you have to respect it. Hey, that's pretty good. And continuing that train of complex musicianship but moving into the progressive realm, there are plenty of metalcore bands out there who know how to write those lengthier compositions to appeal to fans of everything from, again, Opeth to Dream Theater. Periphery certainly comes to mind, but I understand why they can be a bit divisive and I'm also doing my best to avoid gent since that has become sort of the default stereotype. Barring that, you've got bands like August Burns Red, Tesseract, and my personal favorite, Between the Buried and Me. Those only familiar with their more modern material may question their inclusion here at all, but going back, especially to the self-titled and the silent circus, they absolutely spawned from the same scene and shared the same metalcore touring circuits. But even back then, these guys were flexing a wide range of influences from brutal death metal to tech death. There are moments where they basically go full-on dying fetus. But then as they move forward to Alaska and Colors, they became a full-on progressive metal band with the insanely intricate and dynamic songwriting reaching an absolute peak in my mind with Parallax 2 and Colors 2. Yeah. 
Their performances are always incredible, like next level shit, and there's always kind of an entry point for everyone here from the obvious nods to Queen on Coma Ecliptic to the covers of alternative songs on The Anatomy Of. Hell, their name came from a Counting Crows song, of all things. One of my all-time favorite bands on this list to this day, and for good reason. But let me circle back to that early formative era again to highlight another OG metalcore band for a different reason this time, and that's the massively underrated Zayo. Now, I could say a lot of similar things about Zayo that I did about Converge, but I'd argue that these guys have gone through even more stylistic shifts over the course of their discography. But as far as this list goes, I'd like to turn the Doom fans out there onto their 2021 release, The Crimson Corridor. While their metalcore and mathcore foundations are still intact, the focus here is largely on suffocatingly miserable atmosphere and more than a few overtly Doom elements that were expertly executed to the point that this quickly became one of my favorite albums of the entire year. And honestly, if this was your first time hearing them without any context, you'd probably never guess that they were metalcore to begin with. One of the more recent developments in the genre, at least in terms of increasing popularity, is the tying in of shoegaze and drifting post-metal elements. In some ways, I feel like this is the new en vogue movement in the same way that Gent was in the 2010s, with prime examples here including Rolo Tomasi, Grayscale Season, and Loathe. Loathe also has some crossover appeal to the likes of Deftones fans in their clean sections while getting just as heavy as other new metal inspired acts like Code Orange and Vein FM. But once more, the level of atmosphere generated from some of these bands is absolutely stunning, with Rolo Tomasi also often triggering comparisons to 80s dream pop artists like Julie Cruz. <laughs> And finally, I could go on and on, but as long as we're also talking about gateway bands for those non-metalheads out there, we couldn't close without mentioning the pop-punk-infused metalcore bands and the likes of Chunk No Captain Chunk, Four Year Strong, and of course, A Day to Remember. Why do you hate fun? Now, admittedly, I've been a little iffy about this band's modern output, but this style known as Easycore is just one more example of the versatility of this genre and just how many different entry points there are available, regardless of what kind of music you normally listen to. So I hope this inspires you to stop being a little baby bitch and just try out at least a few of these bands to cast off the myth that metalcore is just whiny kids slinging the same generic binary riffs and corny lyrics to teeny bopper fans. Drop your metalcore gateway suggestions in the comments Comments and check out this playlist for more metalcore band and album suggestions. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.